guys. Today, we are going to do something totally different than what I normally did. We are going to talk patterns. What do you guys think about my Rachel Mexi or Maxi? Maxi, maybe? Oh, it's M-A-K-S-Y, Maxi. Anyway, what do you guys think about my Rachel Maxi type of video? Because, you know, patterns and making clothes and... Anyway, I thought it would be fun to do one on the floor. I have watched many videos and seen many people doing their videos on the floor. What follows is a brief construction montage. I mean, I know most of these people are 25 or 15 or whatever. A lot of the unboxing girls do them on the floor. But when you get over 40, this floor stuff is for the birds. But I understand why they do it. It's cool. You don't have to clean your house and just sit in front of your sofa. No one sees how bad your house is. I love it. And what I'm going to do is what I've been promising you guys for a while is how to take an adult pattern just a normal adult pattern and shrink it down to make it a pattern for your BJD doll. Now, first of all, I want to make this really clear. This cannot be done with every single pattern that's out there. Sorry to disappoint you and I hope your pattern is not one of them, but it will take a certain type of pattern. And I can't just tell you offhand, you will have to look at the pattern itself to decide if it can work or not. These two we're going to work on today. One of them is this coat. Oh, the other one's her shoes. Wait, I'll be right back if I can get up off the floor. Because again, I'm not 25. Whoa, oh my gosh. 20 minutes later. Okay. I think I heard something. Oh, I think I heard a lot of things. Okay, anyway, I'm back. And this is what I wanted to show you was these little boots that... I'm going to show you how to make. That is this pattern, and they're actually little, like, booties, you know, like, slippers, booties that you wear around the house, house booties, maybe, whatever you want to call them. What do they call them? I don't know what they call them. Um, slippers and booties. Booties. Okay, so what we wanted to do, they're actually, like I said, they're little booties, and what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to shrink this pattern down so you can... Okay. this... So they're not really good for outside. You can make them work outside, but this is just soft felt, and I can't, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make these. They're so cute. Okay, slip these on her. Now these just slip on your doll. They do not have Velcro, oh, thank goodness. Do you all know how I feel about Velcro? I think it sucks, but they fit really, really good. And they're so cute. And you can make these out of whatever you want to make them out of. I made them out of what they call play fur. But you can make them out of felt or any kind of stiffer fabric. Whatever you want to make them out of, that is totally going to be up to you. The coat, I'm also going to show you how to make this little coat. So cool. And this is kind of a wool felt. It will be only something you can make out of felt. The reason why is because when you cut felt edge, as you can see, and you don't need to hem it. I know. So smart. I call myself the lazy seamstress. <laughs> With a good reason. Shortcuts are my life. But anyway, it turned out really, really cute. And because of the pattern is for a real jacket, well, not that this isn't a real jacket, you can also line it if you would like to. Make it with a different fabric, that is totally up to you. Because what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to take any coat pattern and any kind of booty pattern and shrink it down so that it can be a pattern for your BJD. And then I'm gonna show you how to make one out of this kind of felt so that it's easy and cheap to do. And also I'm going to do the same thing with the booties so your dog can have some house booties. Oh, that way. And we're gonna have some fun, okay? All right, well. It's time to get started. If I can just get this tushy up off of this floor, we're gonna get started on this. All right, here we go. Okay, yeah. Getting right to that. Yeah, we're getting there. Okay, yeah, okay. We're right on it, okay. Okay, so these are the patterns and we're going to start with this pattern first, make the coat first. 
So what you're going to do is, out of all this pattern pieces, you're going to go through these, your very first pattern instruction sheet, this part right here. This is the picture of all your pattern pieces. Okay, for the pattern pieces that I needed for the coat, I circled them so I knew which ones I needed. Everything else in this pattern, you're going to take it, you're going to put it in here, and you're not going to have to deal with it at this time. The only thing you might need for that is the instructions once you make the pattern, but to make the pattern, you don't need the rest of that stuff. So now what do you do is you're going to take this and you're going to go to your scanner and you're going to scan this, just this picture. Okay, I'm showing you guys this uh, printing program. It's called Earth and View because it's what I use and what I'm going to show you how to shrink these patterns with and print them. You can use your own printing program. That is totally up to you. The reason I use this one is because you get to see what you're printing and that's how I know how to shrink these patterns down because without this program I wouldn't be able to do it. It is absolutely free with no advertisements, never any charges. They don't try to later get you to buy something. That's why I love it. I've had it for absolute years. You can download it. I don't make any money off of it. Again, because it's free, I just recommended it because it's what I use and what I love. First of all, if you have a scanner in your house, this is the best way to do it. And this is how I do it. If you don't have a scanner, I'm going to show you another way to do it too. So don't get discouraged. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to wherever your scanner is to scan the pattern piece. And you will click on that. And hopefully it will work. So anyway, I always make sure that it's set on black and white. I also have my settings at 300 dpi and make sure your letter size is correct in this document and that is a pdf file okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to have it set for document to file and then i'm going to scan it okay so here's the scan completed this is what it will look like and then your next step is you're basically going to hit save to save it and here's where you need to make a major change. You can name the file anything you want and you can put it anywhere on your computer you choose to. But down here where it says PDF file, you want to change that. You want to change that to a JPEG. Well, basically anything that's a picture. So it can be a JPEG or it can be a PNG. Don't make it a PDF. Then you'll hit save and save it wherever you want to save it. I don't want to save it now because I've already saved it. Then you're going to go from there to where you saved it. Now that you have the pattern scanned, what you're going to do is you're going to crop out just the pieces that you need. So you want to get rid of all this excess of stuff. So you're just going to crop it just on the outside edges of the lines because you don't want to get the lines of the pattern in there, but you don't want to go too far out. Then you're just going to go to your edit and you're going to crop that selection out. And this is what you'll end up with. Now you want to go in and save this. Then you're going to want to take out just the pieces that you want because if you were to print these out right now, they'd all be really tiny and you know you need them bigger than that for the doll size. So you're going to crop it. Be sure you leave a little extra. You don't want to get too close to the pattern. And then Go to your edit and crop it out. And then you'll probably want to save these pieces. And then what you're going to do is you're going to print these out. And you may, it may take a little bit of tweaking to get the right size, but you'll get there. And you can use your doll to kind of test how you want it. If you take a picture of it, you'll do the very same thing. And I mean, if you don't have a scanner, this is a great option. I really don't do it this way because I prefer to scan it because I've just always done that. I've just scanned mine. If you don't want to take a picture of it like that, you do not have a scanner, then I would recommend that you go to like a public library or somewhere that has a copy machine and you can just copy it there. So then what we do is we'll go to file, print, and then you'll set your sizes in the scale of how wide or how tall you want it. You can do portrait or you can do landscape, depending on what size you want the patterns to be. Of course, you can do best fit, original size, 
really small. <laughs> or you can stretch it to fit the page. So these are your limits on the sizes, but also remember if you needed it a lot bigger than that, that you can always cut your pattern in half. So what you would do is you would go back and you would crop out like half of the pattern. And then when you go to print it, you would be printing all of this. We need that on the top. So you could do like best fit, landscape, or wider. You can make this thing huge. <laughs> but this is an idea. Or if you prefer, you could scan just one piece. And when you print it, you can make it even bigger. Go as far as best fit, you know. Or again, you can stretch it to the size that you would like to stretch it to. And you can also change it to landscape. And be sure when you print this that you go to your printer setup and your properties, advanced, and make sure that it says black ink only. If it says color, you want to change that to, you can do high quality grayscale if you want to, but I prefer the black ink only because it doesn't use any color ink at all as far as I know. So anyway, this gives you different options to do different size for your pattern pieces. And then of course you would hit print if you were going to print it at that time. I want to warn you that there is going to be doll nudity. If you do not have parental guidance in the room with you, you are to leave the room or not watch the video anyway. If you are 18 or over, you're fine. So first of all, I always take the hands off my doll because they'll fall off otherwise and it just makes the job a lot easier. So what I like to do first, I always like to kind of sit the doll on the paper, whichever doll I'm using, and just kind of get an idea of her size to the paper. I call it eyeballing it. I know it's genius. The reason why I like this printing program so well is because you get to see, as I said, you can see the actual item that you are fixing to print. So that way you get an idea of how big it is as opposed to the normal sheet of paper. So you can just go down here on your scale and set the numbers the way you want it. Now that we're set, we're going to print it out. I have my printer hooked up to my laptop because I've tried Bluetooth and it's such a headache. It works sometimes, sometimes it didn't. So I just don't deal with it. It's just easier for me to hook it all up and be done with it. Okay, we print this out and I'm really liking the looks of it. So let me cut this out real quickly. And then I'm going to kind of, again, eyeball it. Okay, this actually looks just perfect. I mean, seriously perfect. So I'm definitely going to go with this size. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these numbers down is that I have scaled it to. And I'm going to write it down on the pattern instruction sheet itself so that I will always remember that because surprise how often this number is going to be the same with any pattern that you print up. Next, we're going to print up the booties. So basically this is what you would do with any of your pattern pieces, including like the booty ones. You'll just cut out which ones that you need, save them, so we'll crop them out, then save them and print them out. Okay, now I'm going to do some of my famous eyeballing and I'm going to eyeball the booties. Not, not this booty, but these booties. File, print, leave it on the same setting, and as portrait, you can see all that's up there. Okay, print. I like that, it looks great. It's going to be perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reprint both of these. I'm going to print them on tracing paper. Sometimes it's called onion paper. You have to cut the sheet down to fit your actual printing paper, but I like it because it's, it's more like pattern paper. It just is easier to pin down on your fabric. You can also take like some of your patterns will have extra paper in it, just blank pattern paper, and you can actually lay it on top of these and sketch it out and cut that out, or you can just use this paper. It is totally up to you. Now, let's go see what it looks like once it's all cut out. 
So this is the back of the coat, the front pieces, the sleeve, and the collar. And that's all I want to use on this pattern. Then for the booties, I have the soles for 9 and 10. Again, you really don't need both of those. You can just flip one of them over and use it. It's up to you. I wasn't using that piece. And then I needed the back, which is 9. The front is 6. And this is the, like the toe piece that goes on. So these are your fur pieces, and this is your felt pieces, and all of these will be felt. Also, I store these pieces after I get done with them. I store them in like freezer bags, and then I just write on them or you can just use like a sandwich baggie and then what I do is I just slip something in there to let me know what the pattern is. So you think about all the patterns that are out there in the world. Again, not every one of them will work, but a lot of them will. So you think about this. You can take costume patterns and you can shrink these down to make lovely gowns for your dolls, costumes for your dolls, cosplay costumes for your dolls, whatever. It's, it's just... There's no limit. So I'm going to go into this one. And let's see if this one can even be done. This is an old pattern. And by the way, I have lots and lots of patterns. And I buy some of my patterns new, but normally when I buy them new, I get them on sale. Sometimes you can go to like Joann's, Hobby Lobby. Some of those stores will put patterns on sale, and the last patterns I bought were Barbie patterns, and I bought as many as I could because they had them on clearance for $1.99. Hey, even if it's like going to be last year's fashion, remember, you can tweak patterns. You can combine patterns. Okay, so on this one... Here we go. That's the picture we need. So, I mean, and that would be so simple to make, and it would be so gorgeous. Look how pretty this is. It is just crazy gorgeous. So this pattern, it has the dress and it has the cloak. So you get both out of that. I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, makes me want to go shrink this one down right now and make make one for my manatee because I love this and I've been wanting to do it forever. Also, a place you can get these patterns are thrift stores. I get them for like anywhere from a quarter to 50 cents. Also, you can get them very cheap like a dollar each at antique malls. Believe it or not, you can get patterns cheap at antique malls. Yard sales are the best place to go because you can get them for you know, literally, you can get maybe 10 of them for a dollar, just depending on the patterns. Never, ever pass up an old pattern. Here's why you should never pass up an old pattern. Think about this. You could actually make sofa covers. You can make tablecloths. You can make drapes. You can make pillow throw pillows. You can make comforters or blankets, everything. There are patterns for those, and a lot of them are vintage. Some of them are new, but vintage patterns, and all you have to do is tweak them. Think about the fact that vintage patterns, although the fashions may seem to have gone out of style, if you take these patterns with today's fabrics, you can get a whole new fashion. Take certain pieces from one pattern and add them to another pattern and come up with a whole new outfit. Think about all the money you would save. You can make other things. You can really get intricate on these. There's gloves, Benchy style jackets. These are new patterns, but look at the shoes. Look at the boots. Look at these. You can make these out of suede, leather, or any fabric you want to. So cool. Oh yeah, you can use this one too. Seriously, they will work. It will work. And you already have your instructions on how to make it. It doesn't change the way you make it just because you shrink it down. I love these. Aren't these so cute? I mean, I've already, my head is like swirling with all kinds of fabrics that I could use to make these and got the wrong piece. So yes, you can definitely do this. Okay, we can do it with these boots. There's the photograph that we will need. It's so exciting and it just makes you want to sew other patterns. Oh yeah, let's check and see if we can do this with like furnishing one. I've never seen one quite like this. I bought this one at a flea market. Oh my gosh, it's got a booklet. This one might not work. Okay, so we found one that probably won't work. Okay, let's try this. I love this old baby doll pajamas. This is good to know if the really old patterns will work or not. Oh, this one will work great. That's wonderful. 
I do have some vintage, vintage patterns. And another one of those that I bought on sale is a corset. I gotta know if this one will work. Oh yeah, it'll work. There it is. This is a very old pattern. Look at that, it was 35 cents when it first came out. Some of these very old patterns do not come with instructions or the patterns actually are blank sheets of paper and you were to do the measurements and make the pattern yourself. This one, oh my gosh. Somebody actually made some pattern pieces. I don't know if they like, maybe they're, they had used the pattern pieces so much they started to fall apart and they made their own out of newspaper or maybe they added an addition to it where they tweaked their own pattern. But this is so cool. I never even looked in this. <laughs> These really old antique patterns, I actually got them at a thrift store. Salvation Army store. All right, let's see if there's a date on this. And it says St. Louis. Let's see how old the new, ooh, watch me tear it all up. Something about an atomic something that's really cool. Look at this. <laughs> Man robs pharmacy of $125. He was armed with an automatic. Forced the owner, Chase Bryant, and a Clark Joseph Mikes to lie down on the floor while he fled, police reported. It was on King's Highway. Look at this ad. There's an old ad on the back. A refrigerator for $199.95. That is so cool. Well, enough of that. No date. Darn it. But that was totally interesting. Let's so see. You never know what you're going to find in these old patterns. Now the question is, can we use this pattern? Yes, we can. There's the picture. So that one goes in my pile of yes, I can. There are a lot of old vintage patterns. <gasps> These are so cool and they're in such bad shape. I actually have a friend who has an Etsy store where she sells vintage clothing, which I used to do too. I stopped because I just had too many things on my plate, so I sold out my entire inventory to her. And when I find some of these and I don't use these patterns, I will sell them to her after I'm done with them. But yes, you can use this one too. This one. Oh, this one is so good. Look at that picture. This one is like completely perfect. This one would be super, super fun to make. This one's vintage too, but it's hats. I mean, you can actually make hats for your dolls. And yes, it has a picture. Here is another costume pattern and it has like boot covers, hats, belts. This is really cool and it even has the fingerless gloves. I think that would be the perfect thing to make for your doll is fingerless gloves. And yes, there are all the pieces for the pattern, so you can definitely do this one too. Okay, so, so far everything is looking really good about what we can do, but I just want you to see the ideas are endless. There are backpack patterns, purse patterns, skirt patterns, underwear patterns, hoodie patterns, and you can even take dolls and stuffed toys, shrink those down so that you can make them for the size for your, your dolls. Even unique looking purses, I thought it was cool. I wonder if you can shrink this down. Yes, definitely did not pay $18.95 for it. Aprons, more hats. You can take old shirts from like the 70s or 80s and add new fabrics and just have a tank top. It's just a tank top, you know? Hoodies, witch hats. This is a saddle Purse. Yes, it does. It's not the greatest, but it can be done. So this gives you guys an idea what patterns you can take and shrink down for your dolls. We went through how you can do it. If you have any questions or any comments or any ideas to add to this, I would love to hear them. I hope this inspires you guys to get in there and to making some clothes for these dolls. It's cold outside and they need clothes. Mine needs clothes. I need time to make clothes. Okay, so I know I told you guys I was going to show you not only how to shrink these patterns down for a Minifee doll, but also how to make them. Well, it took longer than I thought to show you how to do the other stuff. It'll be quick for you, but for me it was a lot of scanning and photographing and cropping and saving and printing and so. So I think I'm going to make how to sew these in a separate video. So hopefully once you watch the video on how to shrink the pattern down so it fits your BJD, your Minifee dolls or whatever doll you're using, then um, I will have the video done on how to actually make these. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go run and throw this in the editing and take hours on end to edit out I don't know hours so I can bring this down for a really short video for you so you're not bored to death thanks for watching I hope that you learned something I hope this is easy for you I hope it's something you want to do leave comments about what you think about it and if you want it more technical and you want to graph it out or whatever there are plenty of other vloggers that you can go on on YouTube and watch their videos to learn how but for this one it will come out really cute
and until next time remember guys subscribe to the channel i love having you as part of the jagged family members also do a thumbs up if you like it and ring that bell so you're notified whenever the, the video comes up on how to make these see you then guys bye and thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.